voltages they use out this way. Uh, ours is a 345, so typically a 345 kV line would have a wider right away, but we can't figure out the, the, the actual width of the right away till after we design the line. It's a function of what the spacing of the poles is, uh, what the design of the poles are, to figure out how but the right away is based on what we call blowout. How far do the, you know, if the, if the wires are just hanging straight down and there's no wind, that's fine. But when the wind blows, the wires swing out, and so we have to look at what the limits of the swing are in each direction, and that's where we figure out what the right away width is. Gotcha. Thank you. You're welcome. You build this with helicopters? We have the capability to build with helicopters. And, well, what uh, you have to in certain types of areas. Yeah, depending on, that looks like it's a marshy area, right. so uh, certain portions of it will be built by helicopter. I would think uh, certain portions of this project will be built by helicopter as well. Do you know the comparison of all these, the, the, the metal involved in all these towers and stuff compared to building wind generation right here? Okay. Uh, I'm sorry? The comparison of the all the materials involved in building the transmission line um, compared to building windmills right here. You know, like, how many windmills can you build with one transmission tower equivalent of the metal involved or something? Uh, I, I couldn't answer that. What, what, the, what the planners can answer for you is, and, and maybe, this is, maybe this is the question that you're asking, the... Um, they, what they've studied is, we know, you know, historically speaking, we know what what the wind looks like in the state in the state of Wisconsin. How you know how much does the wind blow? You know how much does the wind not blow? What type of wind power are we able to generate in the state of Wisconsin? And then we know what type of wind power. Uh, what type of wind energy they're able to generate in the in the wind alley out in, in western Minnesota and the Dakotas. And what they've done is they've actually studied okay, if I can if I can build some windmills here in Wisconsin, it'll cost me this much money to effectively generate this much power. But if I go out to Minnesota and the Dakotas, well I can generate this much wind power and it'll cost me this much money to build the transmission lines to bring it all the way from Minnesota and the Dakotas into Wisconsin that according to the planners, I'm not a planner, not a big numbers guy, but according to the calculations that they've done, it's actually, it's actually less expensive to build the wind farms out west and use transmission lines to build the power, bring the power in than it is to build the wind farms in Wisconsin because it's the efficiency factor associated with, you know, how, how much the wind blows, what the duration is, you know, how much effective kilowatt hours are they going to get in Wisconsin versus the effective kilowatt hours that they can get by building it in the, in the wind alley. And the wind alley refers to a real steady compared to... Exactly. Martin, say when it, and they have a real nice... I don't think I have a copy of it here. They have a real nice uh, graphic that shows... It, it has a, it's a color, color graphic that shows you the you know, effective wind generation capability out in Dakota's western Minnesota versus Wisconsin. And there's a, there's a lot more wind out there than there is here. Uh, what are these pictures here showing this Marshall dug up and that's and then you have to build a wooden road to get through marsh areas or? I think this is stuff that, that the contractor brought in just to show examples of kind of examples of what construction would look yeah, this, like. This isn't really applicable to this line. This is just basically generic kinds of pictures. Right. Correct. But yeah, I mean that's uh, you know it, there may be some situations where if the if we're in a really marshy area, we may need to use some type of a construction mat, uh, or like I was just talking about with the other with another gentleman, uh, really wet areas. Uh, lately, we're starting to look a lot more at helicopter construction so that we don't have to do as much uh, disruption of the uh, of the environment. Um, can I get copies of maps like this one, only a small one? 
you take is, is there something? These maps? Yeah. You should have got one in your, there should oh. be one in your folder. Right. Uh, and then your specific map for where you live should have been in your uh, in your invitation packet. Right. Thank you. Did you register at the front desk? Yeah. You, I, don't and, see, uh, I don't the, see your name tag. And the little green dots, that's part yeah, of that? I don't see your name tag, though. Thank you. You, you didn't register. Yeah, thank you. And the real But they have they have a second. Yes, they don't they don't want them to go here because of scenic area. Right. So they're okay when they come here. And they're going to go. But then he also said the DNR doesn't want them going. He's trying to fuck them from going through here. So that's why they have this route out here. And the DNR is proposing that route. And that's what goes by us. Oh, it does this one right here? That's what he's thought. Oh, hang on. Let's double check it. So, where's Galesville? The DNR is proposing that? Yeah, but he said that's not, they don't want to go through the wetlands. Yes. And he said there's also another route through here too, but they they don't want that one either. But he says, what the reason what right in here is affecting us. Here's your, here's your 53. Right. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure where T is on here. So we're right Yeah, we got to be so... Right and it's got to be running along us right here somewhere, this green somewhere there. But here's what he said. When they submitted the application in January...